Hello everyone, welcome to another session of Schneider Electric PS training tutorials where you will learn Schneider Electric PS programming. Let's see what we have in this lesson. In this lesson, we are going to study edge detection logic instructions. And we are going to study the following under these instructions. They include positive transition sensing contact, negative transition sensing contact, rising or positive edge trigger, falling or negative edge trigger, detection of all edges. So this instruction is able to dictate both the falling and the rising edge okay to begin we are going to start with the positive transition sensing contact so this is a symbol of the positive transition sensing contact this is like a normally open contact with a p inside and this is the associated address so this is the associated address to this contact let's see what it says it says that the state of this contact is true when a positive transition that is off to on low to high or false to true is dictated on the associated variable address or assigned bit okay so the assigned bit this is it like i said earlier this bit address will be on for one clock cycle so what does it mean it means that if there is a pause here or if there is a change in the logic in the left side of this contact from low to high transition then there is a logic one that moves to the other side of the contact there's a logic one on the right side of the contact for one one clock cycle okay just for one clock cycle so in the other clock cycle if it has if there has been no change then it's going to stay low okay hope that, that's clear next will be the negative transition sensing contact and this is a symbol in this system around we use the n instead of p which stands for negative transition so this is also in like a normally open contact with an n inside telling us that it is a negative transition sensing contact so for this contact when we have a pause from the high to the low stage okay the output okay the right side of the contact okay becomes one emits one that is logic flows from the left side to the right side when we have a transition from high to low okay so let's see what it says it says that the state of this contact is true when a negative transition on to off high to low or true to false is detected on the associated variable address or the assigned bit so when this assigned bit experience a logic one to a logic zero then there is a true okay on the right side of the transition hope that is clear also okay let's see what we have next next is a rising s trigger this is a symbol okay our trick stands for rising rising edge it says that the state of the output is true when a positive transition off to on or low transition to high transition or false to true is detected on the clock input the output remains one or true for one function block execution to the next that is for one cycle so the output remains one for one clock cycle what does it mean it means that if there is a change in this clock input from a logic zero to logic one then for one clock cycle the output is set to one okay and for the other cycle it becomes zero if there have not been any change on that clock input so here we can put all the logic on the left side of the clock and if you want to evaluate maybe change from zero to to one we can put all the logic on this side and we evaluate the wrong the change in the logic the logic wrong so that's why it is a wrong logic output scan instead of operand scan like for the case of negative transition contact and positive transition contact okay hope that is clear next is the falling or negative edge trigger okay so this is just the direct opposite of the rising s trigger and it says that the state of the output is true when the when a negative transition on to off high to low or true to false is detected on the clock input the output remains at one or true for one function block execution to the next that is for one that is for one cycle so it's the same thing then now this time around it is a change from logic one to logic 
zero if there is a change in the clock signal from from logic one to logic zero then the output becomes one for one clock cycle okay and similarly you can also assemble all the logic on the left side of the block to evaluate change in the logic and that will result to a one in the output if there is a change from logic one to logic zero okay hope that makes sense next we will look at now the trigger function okay so this this is dictation of all edges so the trigger function dictate all the edges okay so it is a, a combination of both the it's a combination of both the falling edge trigger and rising edge trigger and it says that the function block recognizes all types of edges from 1 to 0 and 0 to 1 at the clock input at the rising edge, the transition from 0 to 1 occurs on the clock input. At the falling edge, a transition from 1 to 0 occurs at the clock input. At any edge, the edge output becomes 1 for one clock cycle. At the rising edge, the edge, the edge output and the rise output becomes 1 for one clock cycle. And at the falling edge, the edge output and the fall output becomes 1 for one clock cycle. And if no edges are detected, then all the outputs are zero. Okay, so what does it mean? It means that a one, a one to zero transition on this clock pane will trigger what? Will trigger the edge and the falling output. They will become one for one clock cycle. Whereas a trigger from one from zero to one at the clock input will trigger the edge and the rising output okay so that's what this means all right hope it doesn't sound complicated all right so now we are going to look at some exercise okay the exercise says uh, design a plc data logic program with four input s1 s2 s3 and s4 and an output x where the input s1 or s2 is used to set the output x when either of them goes from low to high and the input s3 and s4 is used to set to reset the output when either of them goes from high to to low okay so you can take some time to study and practice this example before you come back to what we have as a solution all right now so let's look at the solution so this is a hardware circuit for for this problem we have switches s1 s2 s3 s4 all normally open and this is our output x and let's look at the plc logic instruction so this is our plc logic instruction this is a ladder logic using transition contacts so the problem c is that if s1 or s2 goes high then the output is set so that is why you see we have used what positive transition for s1 and s2 and we have used the rs flip-flop to set the output x so if we have a pulse here from zero to high then we'll have a set this input becomes set and the output follows the input in that case okay and in either case if this is from the high from the low to the high state then the output is also set whereas the s3 and s4 are negative transition so when a pulse comes a pulse will come nothing will happen and when the pulse goes away the output will be reset to zero okay so s3 and s4 does the reset operation so let's jump into our software to test this logic if it actually works as prescribed okay so i've already opened my environment now i'm going to set up the project Okay, I've set up our project. I've defined our input and output variables. If we go now to our variable table, we are going to see S1 through S4 and X for the outputs. Now I will create a project. Okay, so I've set up my project. Now I'll go to my library. 
and I will search for the RS flip flop. So I will select all and I'll, I'll type it out here RS and I'll bring it to my project. I can now close this one. I'll pick now my positive contacts and negative contacts or we'll wire them up now okay so I'll give them addresses S1 S2 And my output, I can either wire my output directly here or I wire it through a coil. So I wire it through a coil. So I'll just type X. Okay, so you can type it directly or you, you browse for it. Okay, so my project is set up. I'll now build it. And you use this status bar to check for errors. See, we have. We have no errors we will now connect to our plc i will now transfer my logic to the plc one after transfer okay all right so my program is now running so I'll just highlight everything and I'll initialize animation table. Then I'll just rearrange everything. Okay, so let's put it under the first mode since they are all able, like I said in in our earlier tutorial. So S1 or S2 should set the output to logic 1. So S1, I'll set it on. Our output becomes 1. Okay, so if it goes back off, it is still 1. So one clock cycle, it has set a 1. So the RS flip flop will hold that logic since when S is 1, the output is 1. We have discussed about RS flip flop already. And any of these, let's say S4, any of these should reset it. S4 going high should reset that logic. So it has gone high. Remember now it is a falling edge. So when it goes back to the zero state, so it is high now. When it goes back to the zero state, then it should turn off this logic. So if it goes zero, good. So it has turned off that logic. You can now clearly see that there is a logic one on that line. So S1 and S2 are going to function the same way and S3 and S4 are going to function the same way. So you can test the logic for the different operations and you will realize that the result is still the same okay okay so let's go back to our presentation all right so i made two solutions for this okay this is another solution using the triggering block and it's still going to function the same way you can as well test this in your programming environment so here we are evaluating the logic coming from this or this for high, for low to high transition and we are evaluating the logic coming from S3 and S4 for low, from high to, to low to reset X, okay? So you can test that and the results will be similar. Okay, so let's continue. Okay, so let's review what we have learned. Congratulations, you have now understood that positive transition contact is true when the positive transition 
off to on is detected on its operand. Negative transition contact is true when a negative transition on to off is detected on its operand and in rising edge the output is true when the instruction detects a change in the result of the logic equation from 1 to 0 and in falling the triggering the output is true when the instruction detects a change in the result of the logic equation from 0 to 1 okay all right so this brings us to the end of this lesson and the next lesson we are going to look at counter operations and uh, please if you like this video give it a thumbs up share it and subscribe and if you think that this video needs any improvement please do wait to share it with me in the comment section thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video